Tonight, we are going to explore the infamous Bermuda Triangle, the mysterious disappearances of all these different planes, people, ships, all these different UFO sightings. We're going to unravel it on this broadcast tonight. Welcome to the program. Tune in and stay tuned. Here we are. everybody and welcome to FOJC Radio Sunday Night Live. We are excited to bring you another episode in our Sunday Night Live series and it's coming off the bat tonight at about 110 miles an hour. Get your coffee for this one because we're going to be talking about some amazing things about the Bermuda Triangle and when you hear it FOJC Radio style you're going to hear some things you've never heard before and it's exciting to be here. Um, Sister Donna is still on course for recovery. She's not home yet. Thank you for your prayers, but she is making steady progress. So we're very thankful. And uh, thank you all for your prayers for Sister Donna. And thank each and every one of you for being a part of this broadcast tonight. We're just so thankful to be here with Brian doing this broadcast. You just wouldn't believe uh, all of the obstacles that the devil's thrown at us, but we are here. That's right. We're here. And we're going to talk about something tonight that's just absolutely phenomenal. And uh, that is no exaggeration whatsoever. We're going to be talking about the Bermuda Triangle. And uh, we we called it the vortex to infinity, the matrix to infinity. And certainly it really, really is. And it really came to light in December of 1945 when five Navy aircraft disappeared all at once in the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle. It was broad daylight, it was perfect weather, and five Navy aircraft disappeared in 1945. They sent out a search plane to look for the five Navy aircraft that disappeared and the search plane disappeared. This was such a stunning phenomenon that not only the five planes disappeared, but then the search plane looking for the five, it disappeared also, that it got everyone's attention and people started studying the phenomena of the Bermuda Triangle. And from that time, there were many strange disappearances of planes and aircraft that have been documented. We're going to be talking about several of these throughout the course of the broadcast this evening. And also people begin to look back in time as they saw that throughout history, there have been strange things happened in this Bermuda Triangle. Even at the time of Christopher Columbus, when Christopher Columbus wrote in his journal about the impossible light that he saw over the ocean going up and down. This was documented by the other, all three ship's captains on the Columbus voyage, documented this strange light during the Bermuda Triangle going up and down. And certainly, these disappearances, which have involved literally hundreds of people and hundreds of planes and ships, we it just begs the question, where are they going? Now you see them, now you don't. 
Where are they going? And that is one of the things that we're going to be putting forth here through Scripture. We're going to be talking about where could they have gone? Now, Brian, I want to welcome you to the broadcast. As always, it's a blessing, whatever we do with you. And just thank you so much for all you do, Brian. I'm loving this one tonight. Yeah, me too, David. Um, I'm flying in at a high altitude on this one. I'm a little high octane, pretty got a lot of uh, energy to throw at this one tonight. And it's always a pleasure to be on here with Brother David. Thank you for having me on here. And uh, Bermuda Triangle, uh, one of my favorite topics. And uh, David, I'm ready to ride this thing out on Sunday Night Live. What do you think? I think we're ready to fly to high altitude and uh, expose a lot of uh, interesting things for the audience out there. What do you think, Brother David? Let's get to work. Um, there's a book here called The Bible and the Bermuda Triangle by George Johnson and Don Tanner. This is a book that I have had since the 70s. 1973 was when this uh, book was published. And I want to read from page 92 where they talk about a theory by a man named Ivan Sanderson. And this will be part of the answer to the question, where could these things be going? Now, it says here, Sanderson's theory is that there are 12 vortices, whirlpools of electromagnetic aberrations, and these are at 72 degree intervals around the world, making five in the northern hemisphere, five in the southern, with two at the poles. So, according to Mr. Sanderson, the Bermuda Triangle is only one of many such places where we see these things happen. And indeed, there is a Devil's Triangle in the Pacific, and there are other places where strange things are happening. And that gives much credence, in my mind, to that which Mr. Sanderson says. And also, we're going to be looking at Scripture to see if there's any validation. And we're also going to be looking at some of the beliefs of the ancient uh ancient peoples. But he goes on to say, the New Jerusalem, the heavenly city of Revelation 21, has 12 gates. Could it be that the city of departed spirits also has 12 gates? One of these gates, Sanderson says, is at the mouth of the Euphrates River. It is here that the four demon angels are le loose to lead the 200 million infernal horsemen into battle during the period of the apocalypse, Revelation 9.14. Now, it's very interesting. The next cities lost in time will be Gobekli Tepe, and we're going to be talking about the origin of the Tigris and Euphrates River there in Turkey. It's going to come into play as we analyze the the importance of Gobekli Tepe, but that's right down the road. Now, I let's look at some scripture. Is there any scripture that can validate that theory, which Mr. Sanderson says, and we will see that indeed there is in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 12, and had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates, and at the 12 gates, 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Jesus said himself, in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, but I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell, and literally that word is Hades, and Hades is in the underworld. Jesus said that there are gates of the underworld. So this is making Mr. Sanderson's theory uh, giving it some real biblical support there. Now, in the book of Job, in the Old Testament and the New, there's validation for this concept in Job chapter 38, verse 17. Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Gates and doors. And when people died before Christ, they would pass through these gates and doors 
in literally into the underworld. There's teachings we've done on what happens when you die, which will give you the specific biblical context for these things. Now, a couple more from the book of Psalms. In the book of Psalms, chapter 9 and verse 13, have mercy upon me, O Lord, consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me, that thou liftest me up from the gates of death. And in 107.18, their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. And one of my absolute favorites is in the book of Jonah, and in the prophet Jonah, and if you study the book of Jonah, Jonah actually died. Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, so the Son of Man shall be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That's a paraphrase, not a quote. But Jonah 2 and 6, so Jonah had to really die to make that an accurate analogy. But in Jonah chapter 2 and verse 6, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Now, that word bar, it literally means like when we see in a movie, we've all seen them, where they have the two big gates to the city and they put the bar there that keeps the door shut. That's literally the word we're talking about. There is much scripture that tells us that in the heart of the earth, there are places that there are doors and that there are gates that open into. This, Brian, is my number one belief for where are these people going? I believe they're passing into other realms, if you will, literally into the heart of the earth. And the why of that is something we're going to explore here in just a moment. Didn't the, uh, the Bible Bermuda Triangle by uh, George Johnson and Don Tanner, which you referred to at the beginning of the program, didn't it, uh, in that book, it talks about that, about that oh, hypothesis, yeah. the, the theory on that. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's where that comes from. Mm -hmm. And they refer to the theory there of Mr. Ivan Sanderson. And here is another, another fellow. We will just mention Jack Ware's Bergier, and he wrote a book called The Secret Doors of the Earth. And this absolutely, you could tell by the title, he believed from a scientific uh, viewpoint that this was indeed the way it was, that there were secret doors that passed in to other realms in our earth. Also, Mr. Bergier, uh, he was the author, his most famous book is called The Morning and the Magicians, which he is most famous for. But this book here, it's a hoot. Hmm. I guarantee you. I think, now, uh, and, sorry to interrupt you. I think no, real, quick, ahead, real quick, David, I wanted to uh, comment on this. Uh, I have looked into like portals and NASA. There's a NASA connection. Uh, NASA is well known. This has been documented. I, I don't have the document in front of me that they're studying energy sources. You know, I guess if you want to call it lay, ancient ley lines and whatnot. Yes. And I, they have admitted it. They're they're talking about this. They're trying to control these ancient gates. What do you what do you say about that, brother David? I mean, I think it goes right along with this uh, secret doors of the earth. And um, I think in 2024 they're exposing this is coming out. A lot of things are coming out and coming to light. But what do you what do you think about that? Well, it's a fact. They've said this. They're on the record. And so are the people at CERN. You know, they're on the record saying that they believe that what they're doing can open up a portal, for lack of a better word, to another realm where they can contact other entities beyond a realm of existence. And, you know, you think about HARP. Uh, there's literally, um, HARP is banging a hole in the ionosphere. And literally, I believe part of the theory here is actually to be able to open up these portals. And that's that could be a really risky one. All of these things that these uh, science falsely so-called are doing are terribly dangerous. And they're just going into things that they should leave alone because they have left their faith in the true and the living God. Amen, David. Amen. And it's interesting you bring up HARP. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but they did a test on May the 10th, and that's when the Northern Lights supposedly was seen like all over the Earth. And there was people, you know, well, the geomagnetic field, these geomagnetic storms, and um, they're speaking about this in that term saying that they was doing tests during the so-called Northern Lights. 
And yeah. uh, that's really kind of scary, in my opinion, if they're able to control, manipulate things in that uh, and have that type of technology in the heart facility. Yeah, and it just shows you, you know, during the eclipse, we talked about how NASA and HARP, or NASA and CERN, they were cranking up and uh, doing their experiments, and they're very aware of this concept and the understanding. They believe in it. Uh, they're not going to have the science teacher teach you that in school, but I believe there is definitely an initiated scientific elite that's playing by a different rule book and different school books than what they're teaching in school. They know and they understand. So... Not only do we have a scripture basis for it, we have a scientific basis for it. We have these uh, cutting edge, if you will, scientific black programs, I'll call them. They're really not black ops, but they're spiritually black that are going into this concept. But we can see also that down throughout time, this is something that people of other religions believed in. And I'll get, I could give many references, but I'll give one. And we'll look at that which the Egyptian religion believed in. And I'll read something here from a, a book entitled The Religion of the Ancient Egyptians. And it's by a gentleman with the name of Georg, Georg Steindorf, a good German man. But he says this on page 126. Beneath the flat earth, did you get that? Beneath the flat earth. Those old Egyptians were flat earthers. Yes, they were. Beneath the flat earth lies a second earth named Tawet, a land which, like Egypt, is traversed by a river. And this is what the Egyptians believed. They believed that the earth was flat and that there was the earth above and that there was a subterranean earth called the Tawet. On both banks are long passages and deep caverns. These are the dwelling places of the dead. By day, this is a region of dreariness, desolation, and mourning. But by night, when the sun has descended in the west behind the mythical mountain Manu, his light shines upon the dead who then behold the splendor of Ray. The departed who are in their halls and in their cabins praise the sun, their eyes are open. Their heart is full of felicity. When they should behold the sun, they shout for joy when his body is over them. Now, this isn't talking about grandma or grandpa getting excited when the sun comes out in the heart of the earth, but it's literally talking about the dead, the Rephaim, and the concept that we've talked about on many of our shows with giants, that concept of the Rephaim, the root word being Rapha, meaning to heal or to even reanimate, like H.P. Lovecraft's The Reanimator. And this is, this is the kicker right here. He says on page 127, corresponding to the 12 hours of the night, there are 12 regions into which the underworld is divided in the direction of its length. These are separated from each other by 12 massive gates. So the Egyptians believed that there was an underworld called the Tawet, where even there were sunshine at, at certain parts of the time. Now, we on Now You See TV, John and I have been going through the Book of Enoch commentary, book by book, and we went through verse by verse the passages on the heavenly luminaries, and the uh, going in and out of the gates. And this is absolutely possible if you believe in real biblical cosmology. You're not going to see this, and you're going to immediately dismiss this as silly if you're into a heliocentric spinning ball cosmology. But if you understand what the Bible says about the way our wor world really is, you're going to see that, yeah, this is possible. This is possible. And indeed, we have a lot of things here we could look at in the book of Enoch about, about the gates. We see the 12 gates there. So we see that not only uh, does the Bible reinforce that theory of Mr. Sanderson, but also that which the ancient Egyptians taught, and also the theory upon which we can see these modern black science programs, HARP, CERN, uh, pick one, that are that are operating under the concept of these portals they know something's there 
And that something that is there is the doorway into those spiritual realms. And I believe that when we look at this uh, phenomena of the um, Bermuda Triangle, we're going to see some really crazy stuff that's happened. You know, and it, a lot of people have heard about the Bermuda Triangle. But I mean, a lot of the stuff, people should even know more about it than what they do, because it's crazy stuff. But I believe that is exactly what is happening. People are passing through vortexes in these 12 regions, and they're entering into realms of the underworld. Wow, David. I got, um, speaking of this religion of the ancient Egyptians, by Steindorf here. Um, did you know you can t uh, type in the coordinates um, to, like, the speed of light? You can take, like, the numeral number of speed of light and put the coordinates in, and it'll take you to Egypt at the Giza pyramids, Brother David? I mean, what's going on with that? I mean, How does that happen? How does that, how does that happen? Know, how does that happen? Uh, you know, hey. Well, I tell you, you're going to see something absolutely amazing here on FOJC Radio Sunday Night Live. This is some of the wildest footage I've ever seen. And Brian, uh, set this up for our listeners just exactly what they're going to be looking at here. Well, the first one, uh, the first one we're going to be talking about is this uh, lovely volcano that has been struck by lightning, and it's not really just, or it's not, it's a rare occurrence. But this was in Guatemala. The Video we're getting ready to present here, lightning striking the top of the volcano while it was erupting. And there was people outside, you know, video and all that, but lightning came and struck a volcano. And uh, it's pretty wild, so stay tuned. Give me one moment, and I'll share that with you all. One moment. Let's catch that replay one more time. I'll replay it. Instant replay. I don't know about you, Dave. What's your take on that? Because I mean, uh, just the awesome power and force of that is just phenomenal. I mean, that's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. And when we see these things happen in the physical realm, um, there's a spiritual understanding of what's going on here. And uh, we can look here at the book of Enoch. In the book of Enoch, in the 44th chapter, it says, and another phenomenon I saw in regard to the lightnings, how some of the stars arise and become lightnings and cannot part with their new form. Now, literally what this text is saying is that in the judgment of the fallen ones, that the judgment of some of them was to become literally lightning in the form of a lightning bolt and electricity that they were confined within that and could not come outside of that form. And we've talked many times how that scripture and the book of Enoch and other non-canonical texts talk about the stars being angels. So we see here, when we look at something like this, we could literally see be looking at a, a fallen entity striking this volcano. And the, the possibilities of this of uh, in, in the realm of cataclysmic events, this is just absolutely amazing to see this and the explosion from it. Uh, and, you know, it, it's just really amazing to me, Brian, to see this. Yeah, and one thing, too, <laughs> I had to point this out, David. You know, everybody just stands there and just in awe, marveling after this yeah. event, right? And I'm over yeah. here thinking, you know, I know that there's there's interesting things and to document it and actually have the footage, but my goodness, I mean, you know, anything oh. could have went down. You know, anything, you know, yeah. stuff could have erupted from the ground. 
you know, stuff pieces could have fell from the mountain to the top of the mountain and started falling, and hitting people. Lightning could have struck people. I mean, it's pretty ba- pretty baffling. I mean, you can't really even make this stuff up. So, but I guess when it comes to this lightning, you got elemental spirits. You've talked about Stochion spirits. Um, there has to be some type of connection with you know we got no telling what was in that um, mountain or that volcano what you know what type of elements was there to have conductivity and whatnot for a lightning to either shoot out of it or to shoot down to it so that's what that's what's baffling me i mean just to see the phenomenon i know it's not really that rare but it doesn't happen that often but i thought that was interesting that was getting ready to erupt and that lightning struck it oh boy yeah it reminds me of revelation 9 and 1 it says and the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven and under, under the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit. Was this a door or portal to the underworld being opened? You know, we've talked about it, and I've said that I believe that we're in the time where we're seeing a release of spirits, where dark activity, I mean, look at the crazy world we're living in. It's getting darker and darker and crazier and crazier. And I think we're in that time of the release of spirits in the dark realm. Is that what we were looking at? I don't know. But that was just absolutely phenomenal. And I think that could very well be the spiritual explanation behind that. We know that Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 7, verse 10 and 18, he said, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from me heaven. And I think this refers to two things. During the ministry of Christ, literally, there were principalities and powers that were coming down. And I believe that, and literally, Satan was bound. You can read Matthew 12. He was bound in Matthew 12 by Christ. John 12, 31, he was cast out. And literally, this talked about the satanic hierarchy being pulled down during the earthly ministry of Christ. And I believe it also speaks back to eternity past at a time when Satan literally fell in his original rebellion. But once again here, we see a clear scriptural basis for that which we see. And always, you know, when we look at the world around us, the way to understand what we're looking at is by the word of God. And the way to um, understand the phenomena that we see around us all the time, we're not going to get straight answers from NASA, but we can get an understanding. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will teach us of all things, and that means that it will give us a proper understanding of just what we're looking at. And there's another amazing phenomena that we're going to look into tonight, And that is the amazing phenomena of dark lightning. And Brian, uh, bring us up to speed on dark lightning and just what we have to go. I bet a lot of people have never even heard of this. But bring us up to speed on this phenomena of dark lightning. So what got me on this is uh, there was a show that I think it came out in like 2015 or 2016. Don't hold me to that, but it was in the last six or seven years. And it was called Manifest. And the Manifest... Uh, program was very compelling, very interesting. There was time travel involvement, all these different things, people becoming super powerful with all these different uh, telekinesis, all these different, you know, they, they're gone for five hours, I mean, not five hours, five years, but they've only been gone for a few minutes, and there's like some kind of like wormhole opens up and swallows them up, and then all of a sudden they teleport five years into the future. So that's what got me on this. But this, this article, there's an article I'm going to read, um, just, it's, just talks about gives you kind of the overview of what dark lightning is so dark lightning it's a phenomenon right so these these scientists have uh, deemed it to be like uh it won't hurt you when but it's when it's a rare anomaly when you're in up in the flight so they say that you will receive a high dosage <laughs> it's kind of counterproductive isn't it a high dosage of dangerous radiation but if you're in a shell like an airplane for example if you're in an airplane you will be uh, so-called, like, unknown to the anomaly or the phenomenon and the thunderstorm, and you'll just think it's, you know, just a random 
uh, vent and there would probably be turbulence and the, you know, you'll have some reassurance with the, your pilot and you go on about your merry way. But here's what they found out. It's burst of gamma rays and it forms radiation like it has these cosmic, like they even talk it in the form these scientists are saying colliding, collapsing stars. It almost has that type of effect. I thought that was really strange. Uh, radiation, an invisible blast, can carry a million times as much energy as a radiation and invisible lightning. So here's what's interesting about it. So you'll get exposed to all this radiation, all this gamma rays, all these different electrical energies. But if you're in the shell, and if the, here's the thing, here's the kicker, if the plane is built correctly, and you have like, it's safe, if you have this ionized radiation, it kind of wreaks havoc on the body, you won't know it, but the dark lightning will hit you, and it'll, if the airplane is protected, and no, no like, uh, let's just say any, tears or any kind of problems and hey just want to throw us out here everybody that's listening hadn't there been a lot of plane issues i gotta watch what i say here on youtube there's been a lot of plane issues and i don't know if you've seen that in the news brother david but there's been a lot of interesting things with buoy planes and different things like that we got to watch what we say on this topic so they say this phenomenon happens ever so often and it says about every year killing about 30 people and farm animals that's what the statistics are. This this uh, information I'm reading from is 2015. Um, it's interesting that they're talking about a contained shell and talking about that it's able to sustain certain types of gamma rays and whatnot. So isn't it kind of interesting, David, that these gamma rays, all this I, I, excuse me, ionized radiation, these X rays, gamma, these electrons colliding with certain things upon the habitants of the plane, isn't it kind of interesting, David, that uh, you won't be aware of it, but there could be complications later on, is from what I'm hearing and reading here on this uh, existence of dark lightning and you're exposed to all this radiation. What do you think, Brother David? It's pretty bizarre. It, that is. That is just absolutely off the hook. And I, I, I think, and you know, I'll, I'll put it to you, could we be looking at some kind of a spiritual force here? Oh, agreed. I'm I'm with you 100%, and I think it has something to do with what we just talked about in Luke uh, 10, 18. I think yeah. there's an anomaly there, and, uh, you know, I even think, I can speculate all day long, I think it might be something to do with uh, literally the positioning, like where you're at, the location maybe, maybe, where you're at in the earth. Maybe there's certain energy sources, maybe there's certain things that, um, you know, it just depends on where you're at in the coordinates. I don't know, Brother David, I can only speculate on it. Well, the um, we we know for a fact from Scripture in the Book of Enoch that some fallen entities uh, assume this very form of this uh, the the electric uh, lightning and electrical pulse. So this very well could be a new type of you know even electrical devil we could call it an electric devil that we've never dealt with before. And, you know, I've said in regard to spiritual warfare that we cannot be passive. We have to be looking for a spiritual understanding of all these things that are coming upon us. And with the spiritual understanding, there comes the biblical weapons by wherewith we can repel and maintain the victory over this. But I tell you what, this is just things like this that gives us a call to take our spiritual warfare to another level. Because we're going to be, I've never heard of anything like this. I uh, And of course, maybe we just didn't know about it. I don't know. But I think there are things that are manifesting itself now that uh, we just haven't dealt with in times past. This is just a, a really an amazing thing that we need to be aware of and keep an eye on and prepare ourselves spiritually to be able to deal with. I will tell you this, David, speaking of before we get off the dark lightning topic... But we are going to talk about a certain situation that happened about a plane. But before we get on that topic, dark lightning, I think it's associated with what they're doing at Skinwalker Ranch. And they were talking about gamma radiation uh, when these yeah. Tic Tacs and these cattle mutilations. That's, that's for a new future broadcast here on FLJC Radio. But cattle mutilations and gamma, right? So there's this like high energy of gamma radiation. And they've talked about this when these crafts pop in. 
there's like this it looks kind of shiny, looks kind of foggy, and they're literally like it's ice, like it's frost growing yeah. on it. And it reminds yeah. you, like, you know, we did our Back to the Future Decoder program. You know, yeah. what is going on, this gamma? So, you know, is dark lightning associated with UFOs? Probably more than likely it is. And I think I, this goes know, along I with... I would just yeah. about guarantee it. I can't prove it, but yeah. we know that, you know, that that's a fact. This is the working of the fallen ones. Agreed. So we're going to go and shift gears. We're going to stay on that topic of dark lightning. There's a pl- there's a there's a plane that was there God rest the souls of the people. I'm going to talk about it in a good light here. I don't want to, you know, disrespecting the families, but there's people still grieving to this day. There is a plane that is missing Malaysia 370. And brother David, it was a very horrible situation. Uh 239 passengers uh went missing in 2014 in March. I think it was March the 8th, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so the interesting stories about it, there's 239 passengers, well, not pass. I think there was 14 crew or 12 crew, but the rest of them was all passengers. There's a lot of information that's come out on it since then. A lot of people have said that you can find this on other information, other platforms saying that some of these people had high stature as far as high status with UFO phenomena. I'm not making this up. They're said they'd had uh, molecular physicists, all these different you know type of trade, different people that had different uh, types of uh, let's just say they knew what they was talking about when it comes to UFOs. I think it was like four or five people, I think. And it's kind of ironic that this this plane just miraculously vanishes off the face of the earth, so to speak. And you know, there's all this speculation. People, this is going on ten. Well, actually, it's a ten year anniversary. Hello, and people have dealt with this. Yeah. These people are grieving. These families need answers. And Malaysia has not gave any kind of information it's always been there's people going all over the earth trying to find in madagascar different locations trying to find parts debris can't find anything there's only speculation you know there's certain types of the parts you know they think they found old plane parts but it's not matching this malaysia 370 so there's a gentleman that's done a really good job on exposing this he spent like uh, there's a lot of stuff that he's done his name's ashton he's done a lot of different uh things he's big on twitter on x and um he shows this this footage so this footage that i'm getting ready to show it's kind of it's kind of ironic that the gentleman there was a general i think that exposed this i think the dates if i'm not i might get the dates wrong so forgive me after this happened this event in malaysia 370 disappeared but just literally, I think it was seven to nine days after, there's this military drone footage of literally this plane. This is what they're saying. Take it for what it is. There's footage of this plane. Somehow there's some nefarious things. It looks like some orbs showing up. And we're going to show that here in a minute, Brother David. And it kind of goes, it kind of makes you feel eerie. If there's this technology out there with quantum physics, quantum entanglement, whatever kind of con, whatever type of like, you know, nefarious, in my opinion, it's fallen angel technology. And man has been replicating it and taking and adding and stuff. But let's just say this. If the military drones was monitoring it, they knew darn well what they was doing that day. Brother David, that's my take on it. That's my take. So now hasn't this footage been scrubbed from the internet? Um, it's, um, you can find all over X, but, uh, it has been a little bit, uh, sketchy, so to speak. There's a lot of the gentleman that exposed okay. it. Uh, the first gentleman that was a general, he actually, I got to watch what I say. He went to prison, I think for a long, for several years. And then this, uh, gentleman that's been really pushing it and really, he's very, very knowledgeable on this topic. He has been ridiculed. He has been threatened. I mean, it's kind of a really touchy subject. It's a really touchy subject. Yeah. But these yeah. people have not had closure, David. And But this no. footage I'm getting ready to show you all, it is pretty compelling. So check this out. Yeah, yeah. This, this video is over the top, off the hook. I mean, it speaks for itself. And you watch it once and you say, what, did I really see that? You go back and look at it again. Uh, this just very much is right down the vortex, if you will, or I guess we should say right down the matrix of that which we're talking about. But this is phenomenal. This is really phenomenal. Let's let's take a look at it. So there's no sound, everybody, so we can comment on it. But here's the here's the footage of the plane. It's coming in here in a second. Let me uh. Square up my video here a little bit. It's 
a little off one moment. As you can see, sorry about that. That's a little bit of a hiccup on my end, but it's all right. As you can see here, orb coming in. you can see the orb coming in and it's just one, it's just one orb. Uh, the split screen is showing um, kind of one side slower than the other. It kind of shows you the whole uh, perspective of it so you can get a kind of feel for it. So then another orb comes in and then another. So you have three orbs running in sync and you know, based off visually looking at it, my take is it's not going that fast because I mean, you can see them with the naked eye. They're not moving supersonic speed, but they're, here's my opinion. The first orb, I think the first orb was reconning. Um, I think that, let me pause it for a second and fix this. This is I, my apologies, everybody. But, um, but, uh, yeah, so the first part of it, I think the first drone that comes in is measuring the plane the size of it it's literally monitoring and trying to get the you know the dimensions of the plane that's my take i really do feel that that's what that's deep in my heart on that i really do feel that's how i feel and articulate it what do you think david because it comes in it starts recon the situation getting a getting these bearings and the dimensions of the plane and then you have one come in and then one after the other and um and then here in a minute folks we're going to show it's going to it's going to dissipate. The thing's going to disappear here in a little bit. And there you go. You see on the screen, oh. boom. And uh, what it does, it, and you're going to, sh you're going to see some heat signatures. You're going to see, uh, see some sonar and whatnot. And uh, it's pretty interesting what's going to come in here in a second. It's going to, whoop. it'll pop in here in a second. It's going to show the other footage. But, you can see it it just dissipates and goes into it it almost looks like a wormhole and we're going to talk about wormholes here in a little bit in this broadcast there's there's like this dissipation so here's here's how i see this so you have moisture and here's another uh, uh view of it with some heat there boom it just disappears and it just goes into no telling where a bolivian but you can see it and i know this is a lot of people have uh ridiculed that gentleman there's no there's no like ai this is this was out before ai really was even taken over back in 2014 there's no photoshop i mean you're literally looking at a wormhole here folks it's pretty it's pretty bizarre and so you have all these elements in the sky you have the air different different types of pressure whatever the type of conditions you have and you have what's so ironic you have this military drone just miraculously uh you know visually <laughs> watching and monitoring what do you think, Brother Dave? What's your comments on this? Sorry about the little vi a little hiccup on the visuals, but uh, we but we I think we got her lined out. But what do you think, David? Well, it's just phenomenal. And what what it appears we were looking at there is that these three orbs were moving in a definite pattern around this craft, just like they were creating a vortex around this plane. And then, surely enough, it just disappeared, as if that's what these orbs were doing they were creating a vortex or a portal that this plane passed into. And if what we're saying tonight has any validity, it certainly does spiritual, scientific and ancient uh, historical validity that this plane went through a, a, a portal, if you will, into another realm, which I believe our, our best uh, possibility for that is into the, into the heart of the earth. And then, boy, the speculations of why, you know, there's another whole can of worms there. But it looks like we have just seen a vortex being created and a plane passing through it right before our eyes. And I think this has uh, just what has happened in many, many, many instances. If it were possible to have seen the uh, such footage of Flight 19, that the the first and most famous uh, disappearance in the Bermuda Triangle, I believe we would have seen the very same thing. Yeah, I totally agree. And then you have, well, you got to think about the occupants of the plane and how much importance, like I mentioned earlier, what did they know? Like who was on the plane? You know, what was going on there? 
And I know there's a lot of people that were just, there was children on that plane. I mean, my goodness. And it, it reminds me, it's very eerie. You know, I hate to keep, you know, looking at movie references and TV shows, but the Manifest program, that the, that yeah. came, it's exactly the same thing. It's a, it's almost like that came out, I think, a year after this disappearance. And I thought that was weird. And that's just my opinion. I think that people should be upset about that because it's kind of, dis- you know, disrespecting the yeah. scenario that happened. Yeah. Uh, and then another thing, just not to go down the rabbit hole in a fringe topic, but um, Brother David, Back to the Future decoded we did that program the why yes, the flux capacitor right it almost looks yeah. like the why you know like it's sitting there fluctuating going back and yeah. forth and spinning and then voila i hate to use that term but you have wormhole pop up it's it's pretty bizarre pretty bizarre stuff brother dude yeah and we have a another really amazing documented instance well before yeah mr bruce gernine and uh, we're going to be talking about this man's personal testimony of what he experienced in the Bermuda Triangle. And this is certainly one of the most credible Bermuda Triangle instances. And I'm referencing here a book called The Triangle by Mike Barra, a really, really good book on all the history of the phenomena in the Bermuda Triangle. And Mr. Bruce Gernon, and you can find a lot of information uh, about him on the net. He gives his testimony of the experience. And I'll read just a little bit about what he says took place. He said, Upon entering the cloud, we witnessed an uncanny spectacle. spectacle. It became dark and black without rain and visibility was about four or five miles. There were no lightning bolts, only extraordinarily bright white flashes that would illuminate the entire surrounding area. The deeper we penetrated the surrounding area, the deeper we penetrated, the more intense the flashes became. So we made a 135-degree turn to the left and headed due south out of the cloud. We had been flying for 27 minutes, We thought we might be able to fly around the cloud, but after six or seven miles, we saw that it continued in a near-perfect curve to the east. After two more minutes, it became apparent that the cloud near Andros and the cloud near Bimini were actually opposite sides of the same ring-shaped body. This seemed impossible, but there was no other explanation We were trapped inside a billowing prison with no way under or over it. About 15 minutes later, Gernon saw what he described as a U-shaped opening in the cloud, which he estimated at about 10 miles deep. And he describes this as an electronic fog. And there have been others that have given testimony to this same kind of electronic fog. And you can see here on the slide the actual drawing of that which Mr. Gernon described literally flying into a vortex. And it's interesting that we have shown uh, these same uh, vortexes and whirlpools upon the, uh, the Indians in the southwestern part of the United States. We have shown these on the graves of giants in England. And this really seems to be just exactly what we're looking at here. We're looking at vortexes and literally a matrix into infinity. And this is just seems to be another really amazing confirmation that these planes and ships and uh, are literally passing out of our world into another one. And with Mr. Gernon, he certainly, uh, he comes across extremely, extremely credible. Now, there's another thing here that's just absolutely off the hook that I'm going to let Brian set up for you here. This is the uh, Baltic Sea Anomaly, we're going to call it. And Brian, uh, tell us what we're looking at here. So the Baltic Sea... Or was, this happened several years ago. There was people talking about this anomaly that uh, went on, and a lot of people back then. I remember when it 
uh, was discovered. A lot of people was talking about on the air, on the internet and whatnot, the internet of things. And it's pretty interesting. So this is vis- visual. The image was taken by Peter Lind- Lindbergh and the ocean Swedish Ocean X. Imagine that, Brother David. Ocean X, diving team. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, who'd have thought that? Uh, while treasure hunting on the floor of northern Baltic Sea in the summer of June 2011, the team suggested that their sonar image showed an object with unusual features, a seem- uh, seemingly non-natural origin, promoting speculation, and published that it was a sunken... UFO, so to speak, and the experts and scientists to this day are looking into it. And the response they're talking about the, uh, you know, they had blurry images at first, and they went back and forth, and they finally got the actual uh, imagery to make it look actually HD ish, you know, not so distorted, and actually go on the, the floor and take a good picture. But what do you think, Dave? What do you think this actually is? And you know, they're talking. Here's the here's the kicker part of it. So there's samples of granite and sandstone, and different other elements. And they also said there was samples of loose basalt, ba- or yeah, basaltic, yeah, volcanic rock, typically of a many of a, on the site, which is out of a place for the seafloor, but it's not unusual because of the whole northern Baltic region is heavily influenced by glacier thawing processes. So, you know, I was going to mention this earlier, Brother David. We showed that volcano um, in the... Uh, in Gua- Gua- Guacamole, I think it's like, where, where is that? Um, so it's kind of interesting that um, this specific place, and they're talking about UFOs, they automatically resonate with movies, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But there's these elements and stuff, and I was going to mention this earlier, the volcano. I've seen footage of, you know, they say that there's these disc-like shapes going into the heart of the volcano when it's erupting. Oh, you know, yeah. and what is there something to that effect, this Baltic Sea anomaly? Was there something back in the day, you know, before we had anything, you know, as far as, you know, what we have today in technological advancement world? Is this an ancient Venama that we've talked about on Atlantis in America? Is this uh, something that we could go on a big rabbit hole that this is the, um, you know, like we like the ancient Orphana, the Aoife, or excuse, yeah, there's type of different things that is mentioned into the biblical text, the Enoch. What do you think, David? And um, I think there's, I've even seen where people have measured it out. They say it's like a landing gear. You know, that's a lot of speculation. There's like a, you know, an airplane takeoff area. You know, it's kind of strange. What do you think, David? I absolutely believe that this is an ancient Vimana. And I, you know, we've talked about these in a lot of broadcasts, these, uh, the Vedic texts that talk about these flying machines that they actually had. And I think that's exactly what we're looking at here. Now, the geography of this, if you look at the Baltic Sea, this is huge in the history of Tartaria. And right here in this area of the Baltic Sea, uh, and uh, and of all these Nordic and Aryan people. And right there, the Baltic Sea turns into the Gulf of Finland, which goes right up to St. Petersburg, Russia. It uh, it borders Pel- uh, it borders Poland. And uh, right there on down to to the southeast, we have the Ukraine where we have such a hotbed of uh, activity going on right now. And I think that this, what I believe, and call me silly, but I believe that this is literally a craft that sunk long ago. And here again, all right, let's connect the ancient with the modern. And in this next slide, that uh, get a good look at this anomaly. And now let's jump up to something in modern day movie land that looks just like it. There's an undeniable similarity between this Baltic Sea anomaly and the Millennium the Millennium Falcon. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so what you can see here, I think George Lucas, Brother David, uh, I know that you do a really good job on you know exposing the Masonic Lodge and all that good stuff. So, you know, this one really gets me. I think Luke... Uh, George Lucas, if I'm not mistaken, is a 33 degree Mason, and I think he's in the know. I think he has all the, you know, as far as the understanding of the uh, mystery schools, esoteric understanding, and I think he knew exactly what he was building here and drawing out the schematics and be able to articulate, and then just, I mean, even with the technology he had back in the day, back in the 70s, to be able to make out, 
and use, you know, garden hoses and stuff like that to make sounds and all this, you know, the stuff that he pulled off was like oh, yeah. an endeavor, right? So this one really gets to me because I have to think about it. And I'm like, you know, you know, you look into Simpsons and all these different people that are, you know, 33 degree Masons. And this, uh, this is very, very, almost very identical to the Baltic Sea anomaly. And, you know, one would, one would wonder, one would ponder on the fact, you're like, hey, did he have preconceived knowledge of what he was making? Probably so. <laughs> and then if you yeah. look into the wormhole effect yeah. and all the stuff that they was building up and giving the public and making them, you know, spoon feeding them, so to speak, um, back in the day, as far as, you know, supposedly after the moon landing, all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, well, and behold, the Hollywood narrative. And, um, it would make me, I kind of go back and forth with this cause you mentioned Tartaria earlier. So Tartaria and this whole concept, I, I really do think that the Vinamas, they're trying to keep this from us, this, this knowledge, you know, you're talking about the dark side and you know, the, let's just say black ops projects, they try, they're trying to keep this technology, but then you got to think about it. God literally shut it off for a reason. You know, the Bible's talking about in Ezekiel in the fiery chariots, the will and the will, and, you know, even these congressional hearings, you know, you hear all these congressmen, I think it's in the Bible, I think I've seen it, and all this stuff, and they're always piggybacking and making all this nonsense. I don't even know what they're saying. But it's it's literally the scriptures talk about this, you know, and I think it's in Zechariah 5, if I'm not mistaken, it's talking about the ephah. And there's different, yeah. you know, in the book of Enoch, it talks about the orphana. And what would you, you know, even the Egyptians talked about their books of the, uh, I can't remember, I'm trying to remember the name, but there's in the Egyptian culture, they even talked about these orbs and these wills and all these different things. And uh, one would say that there's a Lantean kind of concept. I say there's a Lantean technology, and I think that would go back to the Baltic Sea. What do you think, Brother David? There's all this stuff, you know, all this different data. I think speaking of like I want to backpedal off what we talked about earlier, Skimwalker Ranch and some of their seasons, I'm not saying I believe everything that they put on that program, but they did say, I think it was like season one or season two, they found an enormous object underneath the Mesa and they thought it looked like and all the, they had phosphorus, magnesium, all these different elements that would literally look and you can make a shuttle out of it. They would say, Hey, this, you could build a, you know, a space shuttle out of this cons you know all this all this material here what do you think david i mean it's a lot here to take in well it there's a couple of things here we've talked about so much and one is the concept of predictive programming and uh the a lot of this we did on one of the midnight rides we talked about the the energy uh, los angeles the science fiction writers club that l ron hubbard and Ray Bradbury and Isaac Asimov were a part of, and all uh, you've got Jack Parsons and uh, L. Ron Hubbard, the same guys of the the conjuring up, the Babylon working, and these guys. Every scientific narrative and all of the science fiction shows you can trace back to this group of individuals: Asimov, Bradbury, and just a handful of others that were all in the same little club in L.A. Well, you've got predictive programming, and there's a definitely a spiritual element to that. And when you look at people like Mr. Lucas, they're certainly at the tip of the iceberg. The, the huge libraries, and I've seen pictures of George Lucas's library, um, he is definitely not doing what he is doing ignorantly. And he, I believe that he is a tool that is being used to desensitize and prepare people to accept these concepts. And we're looking at predictive programming and we're looking at fallen angel technology. We have talked many, many times and we've given so many um, examples of this. And every one of our cities lost in time, the fallen angel technology has come into play. And I think we've got all of those things working here. And I think that's exactly what we're looking at. And certainly the German scientists in World War II, they took the, uh, the Baimana very seriously. And it's from the very Vedic text 
by their own admission that they developed the super weapons that we saw in Germany in World War II. So absolutely, I think that's exactly what we're looking at there at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. And I think Mr. Lucas would agree with us. Yeah, I agree, David. You know, one thing to point out too real quick, you know, the Ramsey um, flat earth map that we've uh, brought on here on the program before on FOJC, no joke, the Yoda, you know, the little green Yoda that everybody goes crazy about, baby Yoda, all this stuff. Well, like I said, Mr. Lucas had some preconceived knowledge because there's baby Yoda, there's this ancient book, and there's these maps where this ancient little green man with the staff looked just like his appearance, his image, and everything looked just like Yoda. And the Knights of the yeah. Templar talked about it. They said they would go. And it was here's what's weird about it, Brother David. The the so-called creature, even back then, they said that he lived to be like 500 years old. Well, it's kind of interesting. They would go to this island and literally get knowledge from this creature. And what do you think? I mean, it's like little satire, little creatures, you know, little Nephilim sure. creatures. Sure. And this was like the 1500s that this was uh, on a book. So this is way before 1970. <laughs> and, you know, there's some preconceived knowledge. And I think it, we could go on all day. But that one... Millennium Falcon, the Baltic Sea, there's this connection. It's very eerie, in my opinion. Not only are people like that uh, very clever, they're very intelligent, they're well-researched, and they're very good at what they do, but I believe also that they are receiving information from the dark spiritual realm, and I believe that they are being guided by dark forces and that which we're, they're doing, and I think they're certainly willing participants in that all right we're going to talk about another amazing incidence of a disappearance in the bermuda triangle and this is these things are just absolutely wild um, again i'm going to read from the book by mike barra i think we've had a slide on this i'll hold it up because this is a good book the triangle uh by mike barra it's a very, very good book with a lot of really things we really need to know about in it. And I'll read a little bit from page 110, and it talks about the SS Cotopaxi. And December 1st, 1925, this steamer, which weighed 2,351 tons, it was a big boy, it sailed from Charleston, South Carolina, on November 29th, and when it left the harbor, it was never heard from again. On the 31st of December, it was reported missing, and the entire crew in this massive ship, once again, one of the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle, this ship just absolutely disappeared without a trace. Now, what is interesting uh, we're going to talk about another movie, Steven Spielberg, 1979, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And guess which ship that Mr. Spielberg has appearing out in the Gobi Desert? Yeah, that's right. In the 1979 film, Close Encounters, Steven Spielberg shows us the wreck of the Cotopaxi appearing thousands of miles away from the Bermuda Triangle in the Gobi Desert. Well, there we got it. The actual uh, picture from the movie Close Encounters. Now, that's not the end of the story. Mr. Spielberg did that in 1979, but I'll read a little bit uh, of an article from World News Daily Report in 2018 in the fall and this is what this this article says it says the cuban coast guard announced this morning that they had intercepted an unmanned ship heading for the island which is presumed to be the ss cotopaxi a tramp steamer which vanished in december 1925 and has since been connected to the legend 
of the Bermuda Triangle. So this ship disappears in 1925. Mr. Spielberg in 79 shows it reappearing in the Gobi Desert, which is just the movie. But now the thing really shows up. And it said, going on, it says the Cuban authorities spotted the ship for the first time on May 16th near a restricted military zone west of Havana. They made unsuccessful attempts to communicate with the crew and finally mobilized three patrol boats to intercept it. When they reached it, they were surprised to find that the ship was actually a nearly 100-year-old steamer identified as the Cotopaxi, a name famously associated with the legend of the Bermuda Triangle. And there are actual photographs here. I'll, I'll just hold this up. This is wild. And here is a picture that they took of what they saw of the Cotopaxi that looks like it's been through an electronic ringer. And, and there's a little picture of it there. But now, uh, where that ship is, nobody knows. It's gone again. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, file this under. You can't make this stuff up. There are things here that are documented. They are just absolutely supernatural. There is no explanation unless you want to believe the word of God that there are most definitely uh, spiritual doors and matrix, if you will, portal, call it what you will, into other realms, and that there are dark spiritual forces that are joining hands with dark scientific forces that are exploring these these portals for their own nefarious ends. And there are also people that just seem to know about all this that are putting all of this in movies to give us pred predictive programming to lead us down the path for what we might call the big event, the big event, the, the day when, well, you know, E.T.'s here, he loves you, and he's going to give you a, a, a genetic upgrade. And I, I think that's going to be the, the, the final climax of this situation. But, you know, Brian, you know, this is crazy stuff, Brian. What, you know, what can you say about this? Like you said, David, just categorize it under insanity, and you just can't make this stuff up. But yeah, listen to this, everybody that's watching the program tonight. Thank you all for being here. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. But we're not done, David. We are not oh, done. No. We're just now cooking up, and we got quite a bit here to yeah. expose. And I just want to say also thank you. The chat's popping tonight. God bless you all, everyone that's a part of this broadcast. Uh, we love you, and we love doing this. And we hope if you enjoyed, listen to it half as much as me and Brian enjoyed doing it. We're all having a good time tonight, but thank you so much, each and every one of you uh, that is a part of this broadcast tonight. Welcome to all of our new listeners. We're having many, many, many new listeners come into FOJC Radio. Welcome, and uh, we just thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast tonight. Absolutely, David. I agree 100%. We got a lot of new listeners, and I'm uh, very yes, thankful for that. Yes, we do, and we're very so thankful. thankful. Our growth is just continuing at an amazing rate. We just give all glory to the Lord, and we just want to lift up Jesus to everyone we can. Amen. Amen. So, David, we've talked about disappearing planes, disappearing ships, all this good stuff, right? So a lot of people talked about the, you know, Mr. Trump and him creating the Space Force, well, I hate to break it to you, everybody, but there was a space <laughs> force way before Donald Trump was even born, and this there's a lot of data on that. It goes back to the 20s and 30s. It's a nefarious thing. It goes back to what Brother, Brother David was talking about and what we talked about on the JFK program when you have individuals that work at a coffee shop, and then, lo and behold, after the JFK event, they're working at top-tier clearance in NASA. So, bizarro world. So... The Space Force logo on the screen there, we got a lot of talk about Space Force. I think it's very personal. I think it's very personal. Uh, a lot of people, <laughs> they're like, man, this guy's from Kentucky, you know, down down by the backwoods, gentlemen. But I can assure you, in my area, you know, Davis talked about predictive programming. I think it's been so, there's so much predictive programming, so much spoon feeding and cognitive dissonance upon the land 
I'm going to show you what I've, it's, it's kind of irritating me, but I got to show you a real true picture that I, sh that I took this shot myself. So here we are, I was talking about Space Force, and there's this gentleman that I'm going to play a video, a retired general, my, mind you, that is uh, part of a corporation now. He's the CEO of a corporation. I can only, I'm not going to say the corporation because I know if I do, that we might get hit with something. I, I just got to be respectful to the channel. But Space Force is here, but check this next slide out. So, U.S. Air and Space Force recruiting. Obviously, it has Space Force on there and Air Force. But uh, call the sergeant, Marcella. Make sure you get a hold of her. There's her phone number at the bottom. I have been a little sarcastic, and I've almost thought about going to, there's like two or three pay phones in Kentucky, I think, that still exist. Anybody out there that doesn't know what a pay phone is, <laughs> it's like an ancient relic and it's nostalgic yeah. realm. Okay. We're talking way back and we're not talking about Dr. Who or the matrix, but they do use those in those films. But I thought about going and calling it and seeing and inquiring about this recruiting system, space force. Not only is this one uh, down the road from me at a, at a gas station, they're all over my town. And then they go up North. I thought it was really interesting. A lot of people will say, well, Brian, are you around a military? Yes, I am. But this is not associated, this military base is not associated with Space Force in any shape or form. But is it? That's the question. And it gets me a little infuriated. What's your thoughts on this, Brother David? Why is this everywhere? I, I started noticing these, thing, these around November-ish, I think, of this last year. It's only been a few months, well, six months or so. But they're really wanting, you know, back in the day, I know how you used to be able to sign up for the Navy, you know, the military, you know, the Marines. But now this, it's not asking to sign. It's just say recruiting, you know, call this number. You know, you don't know. There's not really no details. What do you think about that, David? They have the Space Force logo. And I want to mind real quick, the space, there's all kinds of different Space Force logos. I've seen some that have like, uh, not just this one. I've seen some that actually have Egyptian like a pharaoh. I've seen some with different, uh, like the Graham Reaper. The uh, I've seen some with like, um, let's see, I think like a fox-like character. What do you think, David? What's going on? What? Why would you? Why, what? What's your thoughts on this? Well, something else we talked about in the JFK broadcast was about Mr. Dwight Eisenhower, who was the president, and he talked about the military the military industrial complex and Mr. Eisenhower issued an assassination hit upon a young man that was a duly elected uh, leader of an African nation, Patrice Lumumba. Now, if you remember that, it dates you. It means you're old like I am. But Eisenhower ordered the assassination. He told Alan Dulles and the CIA to take this young man out. Now, when Mr. Kennedy became president, he put a full stop on this. He did not, he absolutely did not want Patrice Lumumba assassinated. But Alan Dulles went ahead and carried out the assassination of that young African leader, Patrice Lumumba. Now, this devastated Mr. Kennedy. He uh, was very upset by it. He fired Alan Dulles at the CIA. And... Um, that didn't turn out well from me. But this is this is just a clear example of how there are rogue elements in our American government that operate as independent cells, each uh, of their own. We talk about the Russian military, how that Russian generals are like uh, four or five little leaders of the country. Well, we've got the same thing here. And we've seen the CIA operating independently as a rogue element, and they're not the only one. And there's so much money in these uh, black ops programs that literally they set up little little kingdoms of their own. And there's stuff going on that um, that the president doesn't even know about. So this is really wild stuff we've got. And this spirals down to things like Area 51, Space Force, uh, and all kinds of things. But let me tell you what, uh, this is uh, this is not good. <laughs> This isn't good. No, it's not. And it's just an example to me of these rogue elements and how they operate uh, e even right out in the open. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking to the uh, president, you know, David, they had, I think it's 13 or is it 12? I think it's 12 or 13. Imagine that, right? We was talking about the 12 gates. Yeah. 
I think it's yeah. 12 cosmic clearance generals that are ahead that know more everything more than the president knows. Isn't that kind of weird, David? I think it's yeah. 12 or 13. What do you yeah. think about that? It's just well, the cosmic. And, and even, yeah. I think it was even uh, Bill Clinton that was wanting to go to Area 51 and see all the stuff. And they tell you, you got the clearance, man. You know? So this is a reality that there are things that are even kept from the president. And, you know, this ain't good. This ain't good, but that's the reality. You know, we saw a dark, stark example of this uh, with uh, Mr. Patrice Lumumba. We see a, a example of this in Space Force. We got it all over. You know, there's some a lot of stuff going on, and a lot of it is directly connected with uh, Fallen Angel uh, technology. It really is. And we could talk about many things. Well, well, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole, but we've had whistleblowers like Phil Schneider and others that have talked about things that they've seen in actual government collaboration with these fallen entities down in, you guessed it, underground bunkers. You know, so there you go. I think it all connects. All right. I'll get her up there for everybody. Try to get it up here loud as I can. Yes, sir. So so the Space Force, so we're going to go and we're going to show another witness. So we've talked about disappearing planes, orb-like objects, military drones, all this correlation with everything. Let's just face it. There's a military application. Let's just face it. So I'm going to show a video of a seriously, of uh, we mentioned him earlier, Mr. Steve. I think it's, uh, I think the last name is... Uh, Quast? I think that's how you say his last name. He's a retired general. He had a uh, a little get-together, I hate to say it like that, but there was a um, Hilldale College. And I'm going to show that video. This video is very hard to get off the internet. And he says something very compelling and something interesting. And it goes right along with what we're talking about tonight, Brother David. And I'm going to show that video right now. So everybody stay tuned. One moment. Just listen to what he has to say, everybody, because this is very, very, very something to document. Hilldale College, this is a gentleman, I'm pretty sure he's really deep involved in Space Force now, but he's a retired general, and he's actually a uh, CEO of a, of a corporation, and it goes along with uh, quantum physics, different space travel, and this guy has the leadership role of that CEO of that uh, company. But listen to what this gentleman says energy the seed corn of all development all growth all survival survival energy so energy transportation information and manufacturing these are the things that change humanity that will change world power and they are descending upon us in ways that are very unique the technology is on the engineering benches today but most americans and most in congress have not had time to really look deeply at what's going on here but i've had the benefit of 33 years of studying and becoming friends with these engineers and these scientists. This technology can be built today with technology that is not developmental to deliver any human being from any place on planet Earth to any other place in less than an hour. To deliver Wi-Fi from space where you never need a cell tower to connect. To deliver energy from space where you never have to plug your phone in and it trickle charges and you can use that energy over time. It can be applied to cars, to houses. The technology of Edison and Tesla that we live with in our energy environment, our paradigm today, is expensive, it's dangerous, and it's wasteful. Plug it into the wall, but yet that's all what we all do because we are used to paradigms. The power of space will change world power forever. And it doesn't have to be a big country to do it. It can be a small island country, let's say New Zealand, because the technology, if optimized, can change world power, and there's nothing you can do if you don't have that power. The nature of power. You either have it and your values rule, or you do not have it, and you must submit. We see that play out again and again in history, and it's playing out now. But we get trapped. 
I want to point out that was very, very interesting and a little scary too, to say the least. And I want to point out to everybody that's watching, of course he had to say 33. If I don't know about you, David, but it seems like that that number 33 is inundated into, you know, movies, TV shows, news anchors, and all this nonsense. But this gentleman, as you hear, folks, he said he can take somebody from, you know, let's just say A to B, anywhere on the earth or any other location, that's how he said it, within an hour. So what is that? What Did this happen? I mean, this is all speculation on my part. Did this happen with the, the planes that we referred to tonight? Did it happen to the ships that I've referred to tonight? Is there set some type of technology? I will point this out, Brother David. I wanted to, Since I did the Giants in the Earth Everywhere program on here, uh, the Pentagonian Giants, the Spaniard, the, the Giant was saying, hey, you look familiar, but your clothing, is your attire's different. There's a count of that. He's, he's like trying to show his attire looks different. And I thought that's something to point out. What is these guys doing? They're admitting it. This was at Hilldale College. This is an ex-retired uh, general here speaking. He's a CEO of a space-like, you know, quantum company. I'm trying to play off the words there a little bit, but he's space travel. He's 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 still a young man, and he's just admitted that he can transport somebody within an hour. I think they can do it. This is a several-year uh, old video. I think they can do it a lot faster. What do you say, Brother David? Well, it reminds me of a book that was written by Brad Hopkins, and it was about a one of the famous UFO abduction cases that took place in Brooklyn, New York. And this was witnessed by many people, and literally it saw a craft hovering in Brooklyn, New York, and literally a woman being pulled out and literally pulled up in uh, to this UFO in Brooklyn, New York. And is this what we're talking about? Are we talking about literally the same kind of fallen angel technology that is used in um, uh, UFO abductions, uh, very similar to that, which Travis Walton described. Uh, his story was made into a movie in Fire in the Sky, it was called. Uh, it seems to me, or, you know, is this guy just full of beans and um, just or uh, talking smack? Or is he saying some things he probably shouldn't be said? And indeed, not a lot of people know about this, Brian, but I think maybe he would have liked if nobody would have ever heard about this. And I think this guy is talking about uh, the reality of where our technology is. And I think this sounds just like the fallen angel technology used in UFO abductions. And I think this could be very well where um, these guys learned this from. 100%, David. So not only have we had a bunch of witnesses on this topic, we're, here's another witness. We're going to talk about, you know, like the gentleman was talking about teleportation, right? So let's get into this next slide. So what you see here is a patent. It's a U.S. It's a United States patent application publication here. I'm only going to show the first slide though, so everybody. But I'm going to read from it. Um, like I said earlier, I'm trying to watch and respect the YouTube uh, is fault policies and whatnot. So I watch what I put up here. So this is called a patent of, uh, and it was published uh, April the sixth, two thousand six. April the sixth, two thousand six, and that's way before. Malaysia 370. It's just kind of strange. So literally the title of it is Full Body Teleportation System. Imagine that. So let's just summarize what's even weirder, David. There's images on this document that has planes hovering above and there's people walking along the sidewalks and there's like illustrations, you know, X, Y, you know, X axis, Y axis, all that good stuff. But really what got me it has these, you know, we've talked about this on FOJC, you've talked about on the Midnight Ride, the Kundalini, uh, different type of spiritual applications when it comes to that. So get this. So there's this diagram, there's this illustration of a man. It has A, A B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay, so there's eight points. You talked about it earlier in the program about vortexes, or uh, yeah, you said vortexes. They're identifying the head, the different types of the spine, the different points of energy, these electromagnetic fields. 
no joke, there's eight of them. But it talks about them, and it literally says vortices, vortices. I think it's vortices and vortexes. So it's kind of interesting. So if you get a little summarize of this, uh, of what we're speaking about here tonight. So here, let's get a background of this. There's an invention. There's a gentleman that uh, back in 2004, of May of 2004, there's a gentleman that performed a literally experiment. So here's a background of this of this invention. The basis of this invention is an event referring to May of 2020, or excuse me, 2004, in which the inventor it refers to him as a he personally experiences a full body teleportation while walking to a bus stop along the road that runs in perpendicular to the nearby commercial airport. I like how it mentions airport runs or excuse me, runways where planes are landing. There is a wide iron grating for water drainage that crosses the road at the central center of the bus stop. The grating width is such that one has to make a concertative effort to jump across in order to get from one side to the other. Approximately 50 meters from the iron grating felt a vertical wave. David there's there's very this is very interesting a vertical wave the gentleman feels something similar to a flag waving in the breeze but it's invisible right traveling down the street toward the bus stop the wave velocity was about 1 meter per second which was slightly faster than his walking speed in the next instance he found himself down the street near the corner of the next block Realizing that he had passed the bus stop, he turned around to see the iron grating approximately 50 meters up the street in back of him. Because there was no recollection of having jumped across the iron grating, nor of having passed the bus stop's yellow marker line, he realized that he had been teleported a distance of 100 meters while moving along with the, with the traveling wave. It was obvious that the wave was a pulse because the front edge overtook the inventor moved with him momentarily and then it back to the edge of the wave left him as moved on the down the street while uh, contemplating this sequence of events he then looked up and saw in a span of a few seconds a twin turbo probe airplane in the distance crossing above the road while making a shallow descent in order to land the in the airport and it says, it goes on, it says, it took a number of days to order to understand the sequence of events. Explanation involves a knowledge of a wave of a wide range of subjects as such as gravitational physics, hyperspace physics, wormhole electromagnetic theory, and exper uh, experimental quantum physics and the nature of man or human energy field. But David... It gets even weirder. It gets. What do you think about that? Just what I read, David. We're talking about gravitational, you know, electrical magnetic theory, wormholes, physics. What do you think about this, brother David? Well, it brings to my mind what Bruce Gernon described as an electronic fog, uh, actually feeling the waves come upon you. Uh, he used the term uh, electronic fog. Uh, Mr. Sanderson. Uh, he related these 12 vortices to electromagnetic energy. We saw the slide of Mr. Gernon where he literally drew this spiral uh, where he says he entered into. You can see the same spiral on rocks on Skinwalker Ranch. You can see them all over the southwestern uh, American Indians. You can see them on graves of giants. You can see them in South America all over these these spirals and i i think there's a there's a commonality there uh and right there as you've already mentioned on skinwalker ranch they've me measured the electromagnetic energy right there where those spirals are and uh, i think we're getting a pretty good comprehensive picture of, of what we're looking at here and all of these things that are seemingly unrelated i think they're all very related absolutely david Okay, well, I'll I'll try everybody to keep it right up here. I'm gonna do my very best, <laughs> and if I don't, you get on me. It's all right. You Bless get you, on Dave. Me. So, so the summary of this invention. So here's what I want to tie everything in because we've done a city's lost in time. We did it on Cardnack. It was one of my favorite uh, programs. We've done a lot of my favorite programs, but we spe we specifically honed in on Carnac. 
And we was talking about the obelisks and all these different things that tie into that. We was talking about, is there some type of secret gate portal, something that they did back in the day with these pyramids and stuff. And we talked about, you know, these ancient sacred ley lines, electric grids, whatever type of sacred esoteric knowledge that they've been incorporating into their life. So it's interesting that it talks about these quantum fields of this hyperspace, right? It goes on. And I, and I speak here, a hyper, hyperspace quantum well pulls the physical body out of the dimension, such as the human being is teleported along with the wave. It goes back to the beginning of this program when we talked about the, the, the beginning or the Bermuda Triangle with uh, George Johnson and Don Tanner talking, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Brother David, 1945, if that gentleman, I think the uh, Edgar Casey, clairvoyant, yeah. the psychic, talking about that yes, they found sir. that gunner. They found the gunner to that 1945 event, right? And he was supposed. He goes, "Whoa, I can't. I think I'm. I'm. Um, I'm trying to remember the words, but um, he goes, I can't believe what happened. I can't wait to tell you. You wouldn't believe it. And then it literally says that he dimensionally dematerialized. That's what they was, you know, propagating, and said that he uh, miraculously ended up in the hollow earth. Like that's what they. That's what the book was referring to. He dematerialized. And they was dead to this plane. It says that. I couldn't believe it. And I know you've read that, Brother Dave. What do you think about dead to this well, plane? You know? Let's um uh let's just get a little timeline here. You mentioned Edgar Casey, nineteen forty five. Uh nineteen forty five we had the five naval planes disappear. That was the start of people really paying attention to the Bermuda Triangle. Nineteen forty seven. Clifford Arnold saw what he called a saucers, which gave birth to the term flying saucer, 1947. Then we have late in 47, we have, uh, we've already mentioned, we had Parsons, Hubbard, and Crowley doing the, the ritual to bring forth the moon child. And then, by the way, just as a coincidence, in this writer's club, that was the science fiction writer's club that had uh, Willie Lay, uh, the Thule theorist, uh, Willie Lay, uh, we had uh, Hubbard, Parsons, all involved in this. Uh, we could, Ray Bradbury, Isaac Semenov. These are the people that laid all of the basic scenarios for all of the scientific predicting program. We've got a big arrow pointing right back here that there's a big download from the spiritual realm and not from the right side, by the way, that has set things in motion. That is uh, bringing us up to this big uh, hootie bob that we're about to get into here. Yeah, I agree, David. It's um, it's something to it's something to document for sure, for sure. And then yeah. the, this so this is where it gets really interesting. And, so, and I, I just want to give a real quick yeah, go ahead, disclaimer David. on Mister Casey. He is not. Uh, he was into the occult. He was not a true believer. What at all? At all? And. His books are very interesting, but they are loaded with counterfeit demonic spirituality. If I'm not mistaken, David, didn't they put a, a memorial up for him? I think that's in Kentucky. I think he, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it Hopkinsville, yeah. Hopkinsville, Kentucky? Well, that he was born I, in? it's not far mm -hmm. from here. Yeah, he's a was a Kentucky boy, and his uh, I can't know the name of it, but he his organization is still putting out material today. Wow. And uh, I know people that are the head of this organization. They were on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. So yeah, they're still they're still a gun. Wow, wow. So let's get back to this patent real quick. So this is going to go back, uh, David, when we talked about you know copper serpents. When we talked about Chichen Itza, you know uh, Quasi Qualto, the serpent. We talked about me and John's talked about the feathered serpent. You know we've talked about the feathered serpent on here. Get this, David. So we have this wormhole generator, and it's called a magnetic vortex wormhole generator. So here's where it's kind of just like the mic drop, okay? So this generator is oh found that smoke blown through one side of the coil does not appear on the other side of the cylinder coil. The smoke flows through the wormhole and appears in a hyperspace cold dimension and was the experiment that result making first contact this is what it says, David. With androids of gray aliens who told me in a remote viewing session that we saw you blowing smoke in hyperspace. And I'm not making this up. It goes right along with the clairvoyant. goes right around with Edgar Casey, with Man. all his psychic abilities. And that whole android concept, you know, 
Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about this uh, narrative with the androids, the greys. I mean, literally, David, it's in the patent. It's in the patent. I mean, what is going on? So, you know, <laughs> what is this? You know, <laughs> so it gets, you know, I mean, wow. You know, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, truth is stranger than fiction. You know, we've got actual patents for this that you can read. It's okay. There we go. Yeah. I mean, I think it goes back and ties with the Grey Decree. Right, the Great Decree that was uh, being talked about in the I think it was fifties or sixties, and all this nonsense. Well, I forgot the president was in power at the time, and I think he shot down the whole narrative. But hey, they didn't shoot it down in this patent, did they? <laughs> the secret no. space programs continued on apparently with this teleportation of yeah. a human body. So it gets even yeah. it gets even more bizarre. So I hope you're ready. Yes, so the sir. so the detailed description of the invention. So this is where I was getting to earlier with the Karnak and the obelisk. If you look at the Washington Monument, if you go up and you look at the obelisk in Washington, if you look and you see in Vatican the obelisk, right? Check this out, David. The obelisk, this is the invention. This is the invention to this uh, quantum teleportation uh, pattern. It gets, it gets even more bizarre. The obelisks are quarreled out of granite stone and cut with a large diameter diamond saw that is used in highway construction, the belittled piece at the top is cut separately and cemented in place and tapered aluminum brackets holds the toroids in place. The electronics from the magnetic vortex generator this is similar to that is used in the patent application, which I referred to earlier talking about the androids and the gray aliens, the magnetic vortex wormhole generator. The electronic, uh, the electronics also, the torpoloid waveguides is the familiar stud coax cable driven by an amplifier pulse variable frequency generator. generator. The claim... A full body teleportation system consisting of generation as a pulse gravitational wave which propagates through a magnetic vortex wormhole generator and generating a vor wormhole with a magnetic vortex generator whereby the pulse gravitational wave transverses through the wormhole and enters into hyperspace where the wave is enormously magnified, enormously magnified, excuse me, to the lower speed of light in that dimension. The method of claim wherein the step of generating the pulse gravitational wave using the two granite stone obelisk distortion with negative energy in accordance with, and it always goes to Einstein's relativity, okay? Just scratch all that crap out. I hate to use that term, but that's just how I feel. The teleportation system comprises of generation or generating a gravitational wave traveling through hyperspace, which interacts with the human energy being and pulling the human energy, being, and physical body out of dimension with interacting with the pulse gravitational wave with such a person and teleport from one location to another through hyperspace and back again into a 4D space-time dimension. Just going back to the gentleman at the Hilldale College, the ex-retired uh, general, what he was talking about. Hello, David. There you go. So isn't that just bizarre old world that we're living in, 2024? But that's the patent. <laughs> what do you well, think, Brother David? <laughs> Well, I think the facts are is that we have military officials stating that this is possible, and we also can read the patents for these very things. You know, we might want to pay attention to this. And to me, what it looks like on the big picture scale, they are trying to do on a micro level what HARP and CERN is doing on the macro level. Uh, it's all about opening up uh, these doors into other realms. And this is also what people in the occult are doing on the spiritual level. And here again, we see the, uh, the always the intersection between the dark spiritual realm and science falsely so-called. It always will come right back and intersect. Absolutely, David. Well, just to throw some more gas on the fire... <laughs> We've talked about this before. You've talked about it on I've talked about it on programs on visual disturbance. You talked about it on AC TV. Here's another here's another witness. This one goes along with um it's another FOIA document here. It's actually a three-letter agency talking about a flying roll. 
it kind of makes you wonder because there's cylinders in the sky, folks. There's cylinders in the sky. I just caught one the other night. I'm not kidding you all before this Northern Lights nonsense. Some kind of weird, bizarre thing went over the house and people saying, you know, all over the earth seen it. And they said it was Starlink. It was, uh, I've seen Starlink and it totally didn't look like that. So what we're looking at here, this flying roll, they literally call it that. And it kind of makes you think of what I referred to earlier with Zechariah 5, the flying roll, right, David? And they yes, also sir. talk about this. Yes, sir. In Skinwalker Ranch, a cylinder-shaped object lands, I think, in the 90s. There's all this, always, always a cylinder concept. Well, this memorandum is, it's an FBI so-called document that uh, was referred to in July the 8th, 19, I said so-called, forgive me, folks. Uh, sent in San Diego, California, July the 8th, 1947. I want to point out the highlights of this. It says it's a very serious situation may develop at any time, any time. You can get, real quick, before I stop here, you can get more information from 1940s, 1950s, 1930s than you can on the congressional hearing and all this nonsensical mindset with these, I'm not saying the whistleblowers, but the so-called gaslighting of the so-called, let's just say the star fort that we all know and uh, that has a fortification. It starts with a P. So anyways... It goes on to regard about these flying saucers, and it says in this document, if one of those be attacked, the attacking planes will almost certainly be destroyed. In the public mind, this might be create near panic and suspicion. The principal data concerning that this craft is now at the hand and must be offered, no matter how fantastic or unintelligible it may be. Seem, excuse me, some of the wording is uh, distorted on the document. Seems to not mind previous instructed in the thinking of the type. Well, I want to bring this up. Number one, it talks about part of the disc carry crews. I thought this was interesting because I thought the Roswell incident was little green men. I thought the Roswell incident, David, what do you think? I thought the Roswells were little green men running around. Yeah. So part one, it's a part of here, it says part of the disc carry crews. Others are under remote control. Their mission is peaceful. The visitors uh, contemplate settling on this plane. The visitors are human-like. I want to point this out real quick. We've done, we just did a show not too long ago on the Giants. These visitors are human-like, but much larger in size. What's up with that, Brother David? Um, number four, they are not uh, from the Earth. They're not from Earth people, but come from their own world. And that make you wonder about dimensions, right? They do not come from the so-called any planet in parentheses, as we're used to the word, but from an esoteric, or excuse me, orthic planet with interpretates with our own and is not perceivable to us. The bodies of these visitors and the craft also automatically materialize on entering the vibrating rate of our dense matter. These discs possess a type of radiant energy or ray which will easily disintegrate any attacking ships. This re-entry, or excuse me, this re-enter the SO, or ortho at will and so simply disappear from our vision without a trace. Isn't that kind of ironic because that's what happens. The region from which they come is not the astral plane, but corresponds to the lakas and the talas. Students of esoteric matters will understand this term. Uh, they probably cannot reach, but they can't be reached by radio, but they probably can be by radar if a signal system can be devised to uh, set for the aperture. So, I want to bring this up, Brother David. Lakas and Talas, I've talked about this in other programs and platforms I've been on. It's In Hindus, it talks about Hades, Shoal, Darkness, Hell, and Talas, Lakas. That's where they're saying, this document is saying these individuals are coming from, Brother David. What's going yeah. on here? I mean, we're talking exactly what I what we presented tonight. Bermuda Triangle, yeah. people going vanishing, yeah. Project Paperclip. I mean, Philadelphia yeah. Experiment. I mean, it's all Project yes, Montauk sir. Project. It's all yes, it's sir. on fire. I mean, what do you think, Brother Day? I'll let you talk. Well, what do you think? It's just another amazing layer of confirmation that gives validity not just to what we're saying this evening, but more importantly to those concepts that we find in the Word of God. It's just absolutely right there. And one of these nights, we're going to have to talk more in detail. I'm going to put together some documentation of the PSYOP, the whole alien narrative, was a CIA PSYOP. The fellow that really started this and started the idea that there were military bases where we're uh, 
back engineering alien spacecraft and all of this. This came from a man by the name of Philip Corso, who wrote a book called The Day After Roswell. That's where it began. And Mr. Corso was a part of Operation Paperclip. That can be proven. The whole thing was a, was a CIA psyop from the very beginning. And this is to keep the truth from us. The truth from us that this is the work of fallen entities. And to understand the where and the why of this whole thing, that uh, these people are indeed, it, it's just crazy. You know, whether you look at the Vedas, whether you look at the ancient Egyptians, whether you look at the scripture, whether you look at these documents that and these patents that we can actually bring up, it all drives us to this same conclusion that in the Bermuda Triangle, there is indeed a matrix to infinity. You know, there is just absolutely no doubt about that. Absolutely, David. And um, one other thing I have to show real quick, and then I'll give the floor back to you. I have the uh, this footage that came out of Israel. Oh, oh, oh we don't want to. Ma- I tell you what, this is worth the price of admission right here, I guarantee you. This is off the hook. This was, um, there's no sound. Me and David can talk during it. These, um, this is over Israel when Damascus and all this uh, stuff started popping off over there. These orbs at the left-hand corner, you'll see a triangle shape start forming. You have the same exact thing that we presented today with the Malaysia 370 with the orbs that was uh, going to and fro and over the top of that plane. I thought it was interesting that these orbs was monitoring a situation. It never got, you know, hostile or anything like that. It just seems to me this is another monitoring situation of what was really going on there. And what do you think, David? I'll give you I'll give you the floor, man. I've talked enough here. What, what do you think about this video here, this little clip? Well, and they're monitoring, or should we say watching, that they are watching like a watcher. Uh, and we see the definite, uh, the three orbs that we saw um, in the the connection with the the Malaysian airliner and Damascus is such a important place biblically. Uh, Isaiah seventeen and one says Damascus will go away and cease from being a city, which will really kick in the final push of the end time scenario. And it it is just you know this this is just such a stunning visual representation. And I think that if these three orbs would have so desired that they could have opened up a vortex or a portal right there, if it was uh, their desire to, to, to do so. But, you know, this is just stunning. It's just absolutely stunning. And the, the people that are seeing stuff like this, it's just off the hook. I guarantee you that uh, if the people in our chat could speak tonight that, and I guess they can speak in the chat, that people are seeing these things. They're seeing these things uh, in their area all over. Um, there's so many of these things happening. We, we've got we've got the sightings in the sky. We've got the crypto creatures. We got it all going on. And this is just a sign of the escalation of the end days. That uh, things are things are they're they're ramping up. They're absolutely ramping up. No doubt about it. It's time to, and it's all about telling people there's one solution to this. It's Jesus Christ. You know, you don't want to go through what's coming without Jesus. Let me tell you that. And you don't have to. Uh, For everyone that doesn't know Jesus, if you just repent and believe the gospel and trust Christ's death upon the cross as payment for your sin debt, you can have new birth. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus is there with open arms, ready to lead us through these dark times, and he will do it. He will do it. Turn to Jesus before it's everlastingly too late. Amen, David. Amen. There was one more thing we had to add to the program, Brother David. One more thing. All right, we're going to talk about a ship with kind of a funny name. This is one of the, I mean, this is just a huge incident, and the ship is called the Cyclops. Isn't that an interesting name? We all know the Cyclops, that famous one-eyed giant. And this is actually the largest naval disaster of the United States Navy that was not 
a wartime casualty. The Cyclops, and this goes back to 1918, it disappeared without a trace. This was a huge ship. It had 306 passengers and crew. It had 8,000 tons of cargo, and it totally disappeared. There was never, you know, we've got uh, over 300 people, the huge ship, 8,000 tons of cargo, not so much as one scrap of evidence ever found that this ship sank. Now, what's even more compelling, not only did the Cyclops disappear, it makes me wonder, you know, these are these guys out there, Brian said, how dare you name a ship after me, you know, Cyclops, you know. But um, what's even more compelling, and I'm being silly, for any of you that don't know I am, but what it, what's even more compelling is there were two sister ships that were also built when the Cyclops was built. Both of them also disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. How can we ignore that there is something absolutely supernatural going on there? And when we turn to the Word of God, we can find not only the understanding for what's going on, but the hope for us to be able to live victorious through these last days. Because we are on the cusp of an escalation of demonic activity that you know I'm telling you the truth because you can sense it. I mean, look at our world. It is insane. The things, you know, uh, the, now we got this geo uh, electromagnetic magnetic storm. You know, my goodness, it's all going on. And it just keeps rolling. Jesus is the answer. And that's what it's all about. Telling people that Jesus Christ is our anchor in the storm through these crazy last days. He is the salvation of the Israel of God, and he is great. He is wonderful. Turn to Jesus before it's everlastingly too late. Amen, David. I can't agree more. You know, you said there was two of these ships, right? There was a sister. You're saying there was twins. Yeah, right? there was two more. There's two there more. Was, there, so there triplets. Was the, oh. Yeah, there was the Cyclops. And then, and this was at a later time. It wasn't all at once. But wow. later on, two of the sister ships to the Cyclops also disappeared right in the triangle. I mean, really? Mm. You know, is there something here that we really need to, you know, there's a definite supernatural signature to this whole thing. It can't be denied. And when we go to the Word of God, we can figure it out. Yes, we can. David, you know, we was talking about the Malaysia plane. I'm pretty sure they had a duplicate of that one, too, that ended up going, and they thought it was... I'm pretty sure they had a twin. like Just like we were talking about the Cyclops, they had another identical... Wow. I thought that was really something to pull in there. Isn't that just bizarre? I mean, where are we at, David? It is. Yeah, we're at the... It's the... It's the end of the world, folks, but that's all right, yeah, because wow. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. Well, Amen. I think with that, uh, we'll get to any final words you want to say, Brian, but I just want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of this broadcast tonight. We love you very much. Hit the like button. What what do we do on the Midnight Ride, the Pounder's Pound? What do we call it here, Brian? We did the, what do we call it? Well... There was some people that got upset when I was like, I need to back up away from the mic. I said, boom, boom, and I said it too loud, and it kind of vibrated too much on my mic, and I All think right. it disordered, you know, maybe some TV speakers blowed up, so I might need to back up a little bit from the boom, boom, you know, so All there right. you go. <laughs> well, well, let's see if we can get those likes to move, and we got 46 likes now. Let's see if we can get that going. Uh, we got over 1,200 people watching and uh, let's on the count of three. Let's hit that like button. It helps us with our algorithm. So here we go. One, two, three, boom. Oh, hit boom. that like button and help <laughs> us with our algorithms. And um, uh, thanks again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be heading up to the hospital to see Sister Donna. Be going up for a little visit with her. And uh, thank you again for all your prayers for her. 
We love you all very much. If you all had as much fun watching this as me as Brian did doing it, you're having a good time tonight. So thanks from all the FOJC family and all of you in the chat. We love you, love you, love you. And subscribe. Subscribe to FOJC Radio Underground Church. Subscribe to our new Doctrine of Christ YouTube channel. Yeah, that's right. It's up and it's a popping. We're adding more content onto it. And I think Tuesday night, we're going live. Is that right, Brian? That is correct, David. Tuesday yep. night, Brian and I will be going live on our new DLC channel. If you go to our website, fojcradio.com, there's a big link there where you can subscribe. Uh, we're just so excited. We've got um, the the old DLC videos we're uploading, plus two new series, and I'm going to be we're going to be starting another one. I, I'm not even, uh, haven't even told Brian about this one yet, but there's a lot of things we're planning. I'm so thankful with the way that everyone is working together on FOJC to get out the gospel. We're putting out more and more content all the time, and it is the message that matters, the doctrine of Christ and the commandments of God. So with that, until next Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central, High five and good night, everybody, from FOJC Radio, Sunday Night Live. We love you, everybody.